This is an LED head torch I found while I was shopping about on eBay. And it's available in multiple options uh, of whether you get the battery with it and the charger with it. I went for the full whack, which was £6.99. And it came from a seller called 2012 Future Love. But I think this is a fairly standard item, so it's always worth shopping around. If you choose to get one, because it's a very odd type of device, let me demonstrate. If I uh, say, for instance, I put this on right now, and then I turn it on and point it at you know, where I'd be working, then it produces a really focused point of light, pretty much the size of your palm, at a sort of working height. And that's not necessarily terribly helpful. And when you go outdoors with it, um, and you uh, say, for instance, this was in the garden, and you can barely see some of the foliage because it puts out a very low level of light at the side, but it puts out a bright dot in the distance. And basically speaking, if that was 20 foot away, it would be a one foot diameter dot. And if it was, say, 10 meters away, it would be a 500 millimeter diameter dot. It's really, really focused. And if you fire it at a wall indoors, you can see that most of the light is concentrated in that very small area in the middle. And the amount of light coming out the side is usable, but if you're out in a sort of really dark area, it wouldn't be lighting an awful lot of stuff. And I have to say, I was out in the garden testing this, and because you could only see this tiny little thing, tiny little dot of light and what was lit over there, it was kind of spooky, actually. It was kind of almost like a really scary video game. So I'm not sure the application for this. It's impressive that it puts out such a narrow beam. But uh, it's not necessarily that useful as a result of that, unless you need a super narrow beam. It reminds me a lot of uh, the pin spots in discos, you know, disco lights where they want a visual core of light coming out because the divergence is really low. So um, it comes with a charger which plugs into the base here. And it's notable that the charger, let's un undo this little twist tie here. It's notable that this is the very common type of charge that comes with these. It's the one that when you plug it into it, the green LED in the charger lights immediately because uh, the green LED is just lit all the time. It's a super basic design. And the only way it's supposed to go from uh, red to green when it's uh, fully charged and red while it's charging. In reality, the green is lit all the time. And uh, it's only when um, you... Uh, turn the red off that you can see the green. It's a very simple circuit. This also, I'm guessing the batteries in here probably don't have any uh, overvoltage protection. And if you stuff a bit of wire down the end of this, I don't necessarily recommend that in random Chinese products. And you bring in the meter. And we set this to volts. This is the voltage that if this hasn't got any protection, this is the voltage that will charge the batteries up to. And in this case, it's going to be about 4.5 volts. So if that's a lithium battery, that's actually quite high. Um, it, it just seems to be made really cheaply. It's usually some sort of simple resistive circuit uh, that, you know, some resistors that set the sort of rough voltage level. It's very odd, cheap. These are very common charges. You can buy the chargers on their own. This one uh, puts out slightly less voltage, about four, oh, hold on, let's plug it in and find out. I'll just plug it into the death adapter as it is. Stuff a bit of wire up the end again. Now, when you overcharge lithium cells, it's not that great for them. It's mainly going to cause them chemical damage. But it does run the risk that uh, it can put the battery under such stress that it could fail in a more dramatic manner. This one's about 4.3 volts. So, not ideal. 4.2 volts is really what you're looking for as a sort of maximum. I don't know why I'm turning that around like that. So let's... Uh, let's take a look inside this charger as well as the light. So... We'll start the light first. I don't know how the back comes off. I don't know if it's got screws because they've put this foam pad, a fairly comfortable foam pad, over... Oh, it's got screws. Okay. Four screws, I'd guess. Yep. So if you want in to change batteries or anything, you're going to have to actually peel the foam pad off, which seems a bit destructive. Okay. Let's pop that off. What, what do you reckon? What's inside? Is it going to be an 18650? Is it going to be two 18650s in parallel? That would be nice, but highly unlikely, although I could be wrong. The switch on it isn't electronic. It's simply, it's a clicky switch. It goes from uh, 
you click it uh, from off, it goes to high level, and then you click it again, it goes to low level, and then back off again. But it is strictly a mechanical switch. So last chance to guess what's in here battery-wise. Is it going to be an 18650 or is it going to be something different? Ooh, it's an 18650. Stuck in with double-sided tape and then tacked on there. Doesn't have anything written on it. I think that's going to pop off, isn't it? So the switch here, is there any protection? Let's uh, pop this off. Um, actually, I can see already what's in here. I can see that it's the little uh, connector for the uh, charger. And then it looks like the switch has three contacts. Uh, one common. It doesn't even have resistors on it. But it's got three wires going to the head. Okay. So it is, it's just the charging port and the switch. Intriguing. Let's screw that in before I destroy it. I think uh, there's a very good chance uh, that the battery wires are going to snap off at some point. It's, it's just got that feel to it. I'll tell you what, let's just not bother doing that then. Right, let's uh, pop the head off it. It's such a big box here, you know, could they have fitted more in? Is that... It's kind of, it's a bit tight. The battery would have fitted in on its own, but it's the fact it's got the wires coming off the end. Is there any protection circuitry in this? I don't see any. Hmm. Right. Off comes this. Ah. So this looks like a metal reflector. Is it metal or is it metalised plastic? Let's uh, test that with continuity. That was uh, fortuitous that I did set this to continuity then. Although this could be uh, metalised plastic. I don't think it is though. I think this is just a, an aluminium housing, which means it's doubling up as a heatsink. Yeah, it feels like a pressed aluminium housing. And the LED board has resistors on the back. The wires have just all popped off. Excellent. Right, that's a puzzle to work out later on. So, um... It's got uh, two resistors, which I'm guessing are in parallel. Let's uh, zoom up in this a little bit. So let's uh, zoom like that and see if we can get a bit closer. At this point, you guys can probably read the numbers better than I can. 3.3 ohm, 3.3 ohm, and 5.1 ohm. I'm guessing the 5.1 ohm, it's in its own, is probably the low intensity setting, this resistor here, and the two 3.3 ohm are in parallel, uh, and they must be the high intensity setting. Okay, and this is glued in with sort of a a blob of silicon rubber. Temptation is to push that off. I don't think it's going to reveal much. The LED itself is a almost like a is that a ceramic or a plastic housing? I think it's a plastic housing with a small LED protruding through. Not quite sure what kind of LED that is. Should I take it off further? I think I should take it off further. Is this going to come off? Or am I going to destroy it in the process? I think I'm going to destroy it in the process because it's not really liberating itself terribly easily. Spudger. I'm not sure this wants to come off. I think it's well glued on with this goop. Am I going to break this? Probably. But then that's why I got it, so we can explore it. Um, I'm thinking the plastic bit is on the other side. Oh, that LED is physically pressed through that plastic and then soldered on this side. That's the two LED pins there. I'm not sure what sort of LED that is then. But it's not, it's not attached, well it isn't now, to the circuit board. 
it does look like uh, this plastic insert has been put from this side. The LED has been pressed through and then it's been soldered on this side onto these two connections. Oh, sorry, I, you know, yeah, if I'm going to use super zoom, I should really try and keep it in shot, shouldn't, shouldn't I, by actually looking at it every so often. Okay, right, um, there's not really much else to say about that, so I'm going to take a look at the power supply now, but I'm going to just zoom back out and just going to pause and check that footage, actually, and just see how much I was out of shot. So it turns out the LED isn't quite as sophisticated as I thought it was. What's really interesting is that this, this housing is to align the LED. And what you're actually seeing the front, from the front here is, if I just press that and it pops out, it's a standard 1 watt LED, or well, 3 watt LED I'm guessing. Actually it looks like a 1 watt LED, but you know, generic 1 watt, 3 watt package. And when that's pressed into this frame, uh, it lines it up accurately with the front of the light and then when you press it through the frame itself, it's got these uh, alignment holes in the, the uh, reflector uh, then this circuit board sandwiches in the back onto those, the leads pass through the uh, holes in the circuit board and then it solders on and uh, that kind of clamps it in place. I'm guessing the glue is just a little bit extra, but there's nothing really majorly bonding the this thermally. It's not like they put a blob of heatsink compound or anything. So uh, maybe not the best way to run that. Um, I'm going to have to test this and see how much current it draws, but that's a... Uh, I won't do that right now. Uh, let's uh, zoom back out and take a look at the power supply. Although I will say I'm very tempted to... I'll, I'll check that afterwards, because it'll take a wee while to re-solder re that. I'll pop the solder on there, though. So, power supply. Let's pop the power supply open. Is it going to have any surprises? I'm guessing it's not even going to be two transistor circuit. It might be a one transistor circuit. Not expect a chip. It's a two transistor circuit. It's got a single diode. It's got the smoothing capacitor. It's the two transistor circuit with opto-isolation feedback. Uh, and the Zener diode, I'm guessing the Zener diode is supposed to set that at 4.2 volts, but isn't quite managing that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I've looked at these in the past. It's got the single diode for the rectifier. Uh, it's probably got this as a main smoothing capacitor and output. And then, fundamentally, just the resistors here are just cheating this LED just so that the green is lit all the time, but the when it reaches a certain voltage threshold, it's not actually tied into what it's sensing the feedback-wise. Uh, in previous ones, it, it was very random. It The red LED went out and the green became visible round about, say it could be anywhere between 3.7 volts upwards. It, it didn't give an accurate end of charge indication. So uh, that's, you know, I could have just zoomed back up in this, couldn't I? I could have just zoomed, see I'm just getting reckless with this zoom now. But uh, here's, here's what it looks like. And the back. So, um, yes, so I'm going to solder that LED back in now and then we'll uh, test it and see how much current it actually draws. So that's it back together again and apart from me swapping the high and low intensity wires, it doesn't really matter, it just means they come in a different sequence. Uh, I, I've hooked up the uh, clamp meter and if I zoom up now on the clamp meter we can see how much current it draws in each mode. So this is going to be the low mode first and it's drawing about 200 milliamps. And this is the high mode, and it's drawing about 460 milliamps. So it's pretty much, it's just, you know, it's somewhere between one watt and one and a half, uh, maybe two watts. Um, yeah, let's see, 360 milliamps is typically about the, or 330 milliamps or so, is typically about the one watt, isn't it? So, yeah, that's about one and a half watts. Now, what current does it charge at? If I zoom back out a bit, if I plug in the charger here, and uh, plug it in here. The first thing that uh, it's worth noting is it starts discharging the green LED lights and it starts discharging at the best part of 10 milliamps. But if I then plug this in, it's charging around about 300 milliamps. Um, and I think the voltage of the battery is around about the four volt mark. So um, yeah, interesting light. But um, the beam is just odd, the fact it is so highly focused is, is just extraordinary. I'm not sure the I'm not sure what they intended this to be used for. It just seems really odd that it's got such a tight beam. 
But it's typical, it's mechanical, there's no electronics involved in this one. It's fixable, you could put a new LED in if you wanted, uh, which makes it very serviceable because the 1 watt and 3 watt LEDs are just dead common. I mean, let's see, I've got a packet up here, I've got a packet of the LEDs here in the colour of my choice. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting, it's neat enough, uh, but as I say, really tight beam, if that's what you needed, this, this'll do the job.